So we'll see. Okay. Some people don't want to get yelled at on camera, so they just uh, they just take the kit and then watch from Facebook. Oh, I, uh, yeah. I I would have no way of thinking I would do that. I am like a drill sergeant with this. <laughs> yeah, but you're so much fun. Well, that's good. Thank you. Congratulations on your new venture. Oh, thank you. It's so exciting. Your your golf thing. Yeah, yeah. It's now, you were the chef. You were uh, over at the at the club in Medina. Yeah, I was I was at Medina Country Club before here. Um, yep. But yeah, it's been it's been such an amazing experience going around and actually cooking with these chefs and, and learning even more. I mean, it's been awesome. Yeah. So it's great. It's exciting. Is it an expensive subscription shop? No, you can get the basic one. It's like four dollars a month, but they're giving a week free trial too. So if you wanted to check it out, you can just subscribe for a week and see if you like it. All right, so should we get started? It is 501. We are, we are late, chefs. <laughs> we don't right. have you live. Uh, Kelsey's going to make me live in just about one second. Oh, okay. Thank you. No, no, no. There you go. Perfect. Hi. All right. So we all have our meal kits, right? You should all have corned beef. Yep. Um, green peppers, yep. yellow, yellow onion, yep. oil, salt, this little clear liquid, that's vinegar. That's going to be for poaching the eggs. Keep that aside. Um, you all have baked potatoes. I have, because you ate me out of potatoes, I have roasted potatoes, but we're doing <laughs> the same way. So I'll show you how we're going to do this. Um, I, I did, unfortunately, my wireless earbuds died. So I am hooked to a wire, uh, which isn't too much fun, but we'll make this work. Um, Okay, so first thing we want to do is get our veggies chopped, and then we're going to move everything over to the stovetop. So you want to cut your green pepper. Wow, nice kitchen over there. Oh, thanks. This is, this is the main kitchen on the sixth floor. Uh, no, not your kitchen. The, the one that just appeared on TV. Oh. Oh, yeah, I know. I, lo I love Emily's uh, utensil holder. I wow, saw it in one nice of the kitchen, previous Emily. Classes. Oh, no, hers. That's Emily. No. Hello. Oh, yeah. Hi. I see a beautiful range over there, too. Oh, in Lynn's kitchen. A nice view over there. No. Or Lindsay's kitchen, I mean. I keep hearing beautiful kitchen, beautiful kitchen. I'm like, well, surely they're not talking about me. Surely they're talking about somebody else. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's oh, no, that's a pretty kitchen. Love the tile. Water balloon. Love the bass flash. Hey, Jeffrey. All right. So you want to cut your peppers and onions, honestly, to whatever size you like. I like them smaller, as you can see. Um, but you basically want to go to any size that, that you're comfortable with, that you enjoy eating. If you cut them bigger, all it means is we just have to cook them a little bit longer. Um, mm -hmm. I like them smaller because I like chopped up veg in my, in my corned beef hash. And now the corned beef, I'm going to cut the same size as the vegetables. So, and the corned beef will shrink down a little bit. The water balloon when it's really wet. Because then someone might have watered it with fresh water. You did perfectly. And we gave you, I love a lot of corned beef in my hat, so you should have that plenty of corned beef. That was a good flow, right? That was a good beef sport, right? Was that to me? I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. I don't think so. Okay. Oh, sorry, that was my son. He's filling a water balloon in the kitchen sink. <laughs> uh, awesome, I love that. Very important. <laughs> so we have our peppers and onions had mixed, our corned beef separate. I want you to take your potato and peel the skin off and just break it into large chunks. So to peel the skin off, you could just use a spoon and shave it, or you could use your fingers and just peel it right off. And then you want chunks of potato like that. So you mm -hmm. could just, yours should just break up nicely. If you have bigger chunks, that's fine. If you have little chunks, that's fine. Um, Cause you're the one eating it. And it's gonna break up a little bit more once we start toasting it anyways. All right. I'm going to get rid of my board and declutter my life here a little bit. Oh, 
Try and bring you guys a little closer to me so that I could actually do some work. Okay, so first thing we want to do is fill your pot with water that you're going to use for poaching the eggs. And let's get that started. Um, it doesn't matter if it, if it gets to a rough boil because we can always add more water to cool it down. We can pull it off the heat. But go ahead and get your water started. And now I'm heating up my saute pan over medium heat. The goal, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to crisp up my potatoes. Now I could do one of two. I, I could, I could crisp my potatoes and take them out of the pan, which I'm going to do and then put the veggies in. Or I can do the veggies and corned beef in a completely separate pan. It's completely up to you. The most important thing is I want to get some crispness on the potatoes because that's what all the texture in the dish is. Otherwise, corned beef hash is just kind of mush. And don't get me wrong, I love that mush, but it's not exactly what we're looking for for a great one. So I heat my oil using about a quarter of the oil that I have. And then I'm going to add the potatoes in. Always heats up like five times quicker than ours does. <laughs> Chef? Yes, ma'am. Your, your stove all at your range always uh, heats up about five times quicker than ours. Well, my main gas line is about this big. Yours at home is about that big. So, <laughs> <laughs> industrial kitchens. I get that's the problem when I cook at home. I get so frustrated because it's just never the same. Yeah. So what I'm looking uh, for, sorry, go ahead. No, I just wanted to tell you the Mother's Day things look great. Oh, thank you. We want to make sure you had enough options to be able to do a brunch or a lunch or a dinner. So I'm happy you enjoyed it. So my, my goal here is to just get a nice crispness on the potatoes. Now, normally if I was just doing crispy potatoes, I would season them, but we're going to add corned beef, which has a lot of salt. We're going to season this a little later too. So I don't necessarily want to do that. I'm going to get these nice and crispy. You can see the golden brown color they're picking up. Because they're roasted, they should crisp up pretty quickly if your oil is heated properly. It just takes so much longer on our stuff. I know, you think about it. Well, so another important point when you're talking about the size of your stove, you have to look at how much you have in your pan. Now, if you see all the free space that's in my pan here, yeah, um, that means that any liquid is going to steam out and evaporate. Now, if I pile a ton of potatoes in here, they're going to steam instead of instead of crisping up. Right. So you want to make sure, and that'll help it actually crisp faster as well. You want to make sure you have this open space in your pan. So I'm going to take my potatoes out because they're nice and crispy. And now I'm actually going to drop my heat down. And the reason is I want to have a medium heat for the next step. My pan's already very well preheated because I have the potatoes in there. So now I'm going to add all this delicious corned beef. And I'm just going to let that go. I want, I want to see that corned beef kind of caramelize a little. I want it to release some of the juices. I want it to shrink down. Um, this is where all the flavor in our corned beef hash is going to come from. Did you put a little more oil in the pan before you I, put the corn? I didn't. Now, you might have to, depending on how much your potatoes absorb. Um, but you do want to have a light coating of oil. So I always make sure in the classes you have enough oil, because if you're using a different size pan than I am, or um, your potatoes take on a little more oil, you're going to need some extra. We're actually doing our potatoes in two batches. We don't have that big pan. Smart. This isn't a big pan. It's only the size of my, a little bit bigger than my hand, but it looks big. 
Everything, you know, the camera adds 10 pounds. Oh, okay, yeah. Now, uh, you can probably see here what I'm talking about when I talk about the, the corned beef caramelizing. It starts to get that bit of a golden brown color. I don't know if the camera's in focus or not. But that's what we're looking for. That's gonna, but it's also, that's also gonna bring out a lot of saltiness in the corned beef. So that's why we didn't salt our potatoes originally. I want this to get that super flavor, that super corned beefy, little bit salty uh, flavor right now. It's gonna bring out all the herbs that the beef's been corned in as well. This is corned beef hash is one of my guilty pleasures with diners. So when it's good, it's great, and when it's bad, it's absolutely terrible. No pressure. Um, All right. So now I have some great caramelization here on the meat. You can see I have I have a lot of great dark brown, like almost purplish pieces. So I'm gonna add my peppers and onions and keep it over that medium heat. And I want these to just start to stew. And the reason I want them to stew is I, I want them to soften and sweeten, but I want them to give off some moisture too. Because when we put these potatoes back in, they're gonna grab that moisture and it's all gonna marry together to get a great flavor. But again, I'm not adding any salt because my corned beef has so much salt to it. I'm gonna let this go while you guys catch up. Yeah, because we're we're way behind. <laughs> As usual. I cheated. I'm cooking three orders of this at once, so I chopped all my onions and peppers before I came on, and I'm still behind. So oh, that's uh, that's <laughs> so much smarter though. The same thing. Yeah, I, you, I was if, already. Yeah, if you have I time to do it, it may definitely make things easier. We did that already. We're still yeah. behind. We're still potato crisping. The first batch. Relax with it. Relax with it. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Jeff, have you been rocking out all this food on the electric stovetop? I have. I did not know that. Are they that bad? No, I just, I'm just i surprised I haven't noticed before. I normally notice that. I'm the one that keeps making that beeping noise when I have to <laughs> change the temperature. I just figured you were cool and still had a pager. <laughs> So I'm gonna just keep my veggies and peppers going here. I want these, like I said, to soften and give off moisture. And this is the part, this is the most important step. You want it to take its time and soften and sweeten up. I'm sorry, Chef, I missed that. I said, this is the most important step here where I'm at now is letting this, just being patient, letting this take its time, stew together, soften and sweeten up. I mean, if you want, of course, you could just take a piece of corned beef out and eat it. All right, we about caught up? Just we just put our corned beef in. Perfect.
perfect. So, Chef, what is the um, corned beef hash that uh, we have at the club? It's like it's called Henry J's or something. Henry, yeah, Henry, uh, Henry J's corned beef hash. I like it. Yeah, it's good. It's um, if I'm being honest, it's not my favorite, but the members seem to enjoy it. So, I was raised on the uh, canned stuff. So yeah. So not not everything can be exactly how I want to eat, but. Yeah, people people seem to enjoy it. Slices of Hormel. Listen, Hormel's a pretty good corned beef if you like that. If you're used to it, it's great. We use Crown Brand. So we buy uh, raw Crown briskets that are corn, and then we cook them here. It's I love, beautiful. Yeah, I love Crown. I think it has the best salt content. Um, I think it has amazing flavor. It's got a lot of garlic to it. I love it for corned beef. So Before we, Chef, before we add the vegetables to the uh, corned beef, how long should it saute? You just want it to have a nice little bit of brownness to it. You want a little bit of color. Okay. okay. Perfect. Okay. Now, one of two things are going to happen based on the size of your pot pan. So I have a big pan, which means a lot of that moisture I always talk about evaporated out. If you have a smaller pan and all your veggies are crowded in there, you're going to have natural juices from the veggies in there. Both are good, but when you have a big pan like this, I normally add just a splash of water. Okay. And, and what that's going to do is just kind of bring out any little bit of moisture and make this a touch soupy. And then when I add the potatoes in, they have some flavor to grab onto, which I'm going to do next. So now I'm going to throw my potatoes in to the veggie mixture. Now I just want to let this kind of cook together. And this is all over a low heat at this point. Your potatoes will not stay crispy. They shouldn't. Um, but you want those crisp, that crispy potato flavor in there. But if it stays crispy, it means you didn't cook it together long enough. It should be a little bit soggy and mushy. At this point, I would normally just taste the potato and see if it needs any salt. Normally, they don't. And yeah, they don't need anything. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of the salt. We're not gonna use that for this class. So you can see my hash is coming together nicely. Now I've done a ton of different kinds of hash. I've done this with bacon instead of corned beef, duck and duck fat. Um, I've done it with pastrami. I've done it with beef brisket hash. I mean, you name it. So any meat can be substituted for corned beef. Uh, breakfast sausage works really well. Um, but the basic hash technique of browning your meat and then your veggies and then your potatoes. Um, it's just a really great base to have for making a delicious breakfast. So at this point, at this point, my hash is done. So I'm going to set this aside. And now I'm going to get set up for egg poaching. I know you guys want to catch up first, so I'll wait a minute. And I'm actually going to try to move the camera. Oh man, this thing is totally going to fall into the pot. There is no no point where this ends well for me. No. Right. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hold the camera while I poach the egg. So it might be a little shaky, but you'll get the idea when we get started, OK? So you guys let me know when you're ready to start talking egg poaching. Not Give us about three, four minutes. Okay. So we can pay attention. I've never poached an egg before. You know, I love poaching eggs. I poach eggs all the time. It's so easy. It's it's simple. It's clean and it's healthy. Not when you mix it with you know fried corned beef and potatoes, but um, that's what makes it good. <laughs> So chef, when the onions and uh, the vegetables brown, then add the corned beef to it. Yep. Once they soften or brown and get to whatever kind of point you want where they're they're cooked and soft enough. So they're still a touch al dente, but they're soft and they're sweet. Yeah, it's just going to take a while. We just put our veggies in. Yeah, 
Steph, your peppers can go at the same time as your onions. Right. Right. They're in. Just put them in. Okay, cool. So what are you looking for on the veggies before you add the potatoes in there? Just okay. you want them to be soft and sweat. You want your onions to be a little translucent. Um, okay. They should have picked up a little bit of color from the browning yeah. of the corned beef. It looks wonderful. It smells great. Chef, you made me call from yesterday. That's uh, I'm the only person in the household that eats peppers. Yeah. <laughs> I know afterwards I, I brought, I, my wife came upstairs because she was in the basement with the kids and she's like, What'd you make tonight? And I said, chili's rellenos. She's like, what's that? Well, oh, it's this cheese stuffed poblano pepper. It's awesome. She didn't like it, neither did my kids. <laughs> I love them. I love chili's rellenos. It's really good. They had never had them before, so. Well, how can they say you don't like them? Exactly. The one thing I will say about my kids is they'll try anything. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, it took a lot of arguments to get to that point, but they'll try anything. Jeff, did you already crown your or uh, brown your corned beef? Um, no, I, I just put it in now. So it should have been brown before the onions. Oh no, that's okay. You're <laughs> still you're still gonna have a great corned beef flavor, so it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, normally you brown the corned beef and then you add the onions and peppers. Got it. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if everyone has all their veggies in the pan and just kind of cooking, we can get into the corn or the poached eggs part. Okay. It'll take a little bit to, to go over this. All right, so poaching eggs. Now, when you're poaching eggs, you want your liquid to be a little more aggressive of a, of a simmer than this. A lot of people are like, well, this is poaching liquid, which is right. Poaching is normally, you know, in the a little above 180, like hot, hot, hot coffee. Um, it's like a great poaching temperature. So you want to see these bubbles. I like a little more aggress uh, aggressive of a poach. One thing I do is I add white vinegar. So white vinegar to your water yeah. is actually gonna help your egg whites stay together when you poach and it's gonna make them hold together and give you a nicer poach. And then I also add a little bit of salt because the biggest problem with eggs is people never season them. Like you think about it when you make scrambled eggs in the morning, you never really add salt and pepper, most people don't. And it's like, yeah. you should, cause you should treat it like anything else in the world. So I wish I had a helmet cam. Can I ask a poaching question? Yes. You're doing multiple batches. Do I have to like keep adding vinegar? Do I have to have new nope. poaching liquid every time? How does that nope. Work? You can, so I'll give you an example. So like, like Mother's Day, right? I mean, we'll poach 1100 eggs on Mother's Day. Wow. And we have a big giant pot that we use of water and vinegar and we just keep adding eggs to it. And then if you're poaching a bunch of them, you'll start to see a foam develop at the top and that's kind of just a residual egg. You just skim that off and you keep going in the same pot. Okay. So this is the, this is the speed and kind of aggressive uh, poaching temperature I want. Okay, any harder, it's still gonna poach nicely, but you, you'll have less of a chance of getting that custardy kind of inside on the egg. Any softer and your egg's not gonna stay together. So you wanna have some bubbles and a little aggression and I'll show you when we drop our first egg in. So there's a great little method for doing this. And what you do is you make a whirlpool in your pot first. And what this is going to do is create motion in the water. So when you drop your egg in, it's going directly into the center. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So now it's moving. So if I drop my egg in, see how it all stays oh. together in the center? Oh. Wow. Little, little trick I learned in Vietnam. I don't want to know about that, but okay. <laughs> so now when, when the egg poaches, you're going to see a few things happen, right? You're going to see the outside of the white start to, to come together. It's going to go from that transparent color to white. Also, if your pot's not super deep, you might need to just move it a touch. 
So you take your spoon underneath and just give it a gentle push. And now it's got a little bit of motion to it. So that means when it's moving around, it's getting evenly poached everywhere. Ideally, it'd be fully submerged like it is right now. So if I go in there and I press my egg down, it would actually go completely underwater. These little bit of bubbles, they're great because these little bit of bubbles are telling me that my water's moving, my water's hot, but my egg's staying together because of the vinegar. See that? So at this point now, you're looking at it and you're like, okay, well, the thing's completely white. How do I possibly know if it's done? Well, you could tell if you just take your slotted spoon and you pick it up and jiggle, it's completely raw. You could see that all the white part is really jiggly and raw. And the white part cooks at a lower temperature than, I'm sorry, the whites and the yolks cook at different temperatures. Wait, wait, wait. So the whites are going to cook before the yolks because it's encapsulated by, the yolks encapsulated by the whites as well. So normally, I mean, poaching an egg is like a two to three minute thing. And you're going to over poach them. And if you over poach them, guess what? You got hard boiled eggs. That's the way I like it. Yeah, a lot of people do. So if you're poaching over medium, you just let it go a minute longer and you'll be able to tell. So at this point now, I would consider this properly poached. And if I take it out, the white's not jiggly, the center is jiggly. And actually, if I press down on this egg here, I can feel it's got a spring to it, which means that the inside is nice and cooked, um, but it's not firm or hard or anything. So I'm going to take this one out and I'll just set this aside because we're going to obviously play it up with it in a minute. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this again. So now here, here's a little trick for those of you that may not be comfortable cracking an egg directly into a pot, which is a very common thing that people are uncomfortable with is you can crack it into a small bowl. Okay. And this gives you a little more control. So now I can just take this when I'm ready for it and dump it in. And if you're doing multiple batches, you can crack two eggs into one bowl and drop it in and they'll separate in the water. Egg. So I make my whirlpool, I drop my egg in and you see how it all stays together. And that's the beauty of it. So super easy. And like I said, I poach a lot of eggs at home because it is so simple and people don't realize just how easy it is. Something like an Eggs Benedict, the hardest thing to make is the sauce. The rest of the dish is insanely simple. So keep this rate of boiling, of, of poaching or simmering, I should say. And your eggs are going to do everything they need to do in there by themselves. And again, mine's a little stuck. So just give it a tiny nudge. And now it's free. And now it's starting to move around the pot. Dancing in there. It's like me in the summer when I had a few drinks. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck, darling. You need a uh, so. All right. To stir it first. There you go. Are you guys We're going learning something new. Absolutely. That's the whole point. Hey, Seth, it is a question from Facebook. Yes. Um, are we uh, still serving the hazelnut soup in the club? Perfect, but it's are, okay. are we still serving what? Hazelnut soup. Hazelnut soup? Yes. In the market? Uh, no, in the club. And are you planning on putting it on the market? Uh, hazelnut I have, soup? Yeah, I have not seen a hazelnut soup here. Okay. I'll let them know. But I'd be interested to try it. All right. So here's the beauty of poached eggs. So say you're having a, a dinner party and you want to poach eggs to put them on top of the cell. You can poach them ahead of time, take them out and just put them in cold water and just leave them aside. And then say before your dinner party, you want to put them on a cell, just take them out of the water and let them sit and they'll come to room temperature and they're perfect to go on top of a salad. But it takes all that stress of, oh, my God, I got poach eggs, I got to poach eggs. Well, you have guests over, and then you're flipping out in front of everyone. <laughs> you can just kind of relax and enjoy yourself. Chef? Yes, ma'am. Two questions. How do we know when the hash is done, and how do we know when the eggs are done? So the eggs, like I said, they're going to have, when they jiggle. The wiggly part. The wiggly part. So the, the yolk itself should jiggle, and the white shouldn't. Or it'll just have, like, 
a jello jiggle. It won't be a slimy yeah, jiggle. I see it. Thank you. And the hash? The hash is just to your liking, honestly. I mean, once it's all married together and it tastes great, it's done. Oh, okay. You're in charge. You, you make the call on the hash. That's, that's the beauty of it. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful dish. You got potatoes and vegetables, everything you want in the morning. Now, I do this with sweet potatoes too sometimes and make a sweet potato hash. Lower on the glycemic index. It's really great. Um, fits into paleo lifestyles if you wanted to live that way. Um, so, I mean, sweet potato hash is delicious. That makes sweet potato hash browns, all that kind of stuff at home. Um, but all right, so I am going to plate this up just so you guys can see the final dish. How we're going to do this now. You get a good view. There you go. So I'm going to take my hash and you can do it on a plate. You can do it on a bowl. I like a plate, um, but sometimes at home bowls are easier because you're going to get all that runniness from the yolk, uh, from the yolk draping over the hash. But you lay down your corned beef hash and then take my poached eggs. Now, what you could do is you could take your eggs right out of the water and put it on the hash. Always the easiest way to go. It's always easier to pick up a poached egg when it's floating than when it's sitting. Um, that's why I say if you're pre-poaching them to leave them in water. So I had the poached eggs right on top. And then you all have green onions uh, to cut. Oh, yeah, I need to look at this face. So you can cut and garnish your, your hash with your green onions. I have parsley because you guys ate all my green onions. Um, so I'm gonna add some parsley, but I always love adding some sort of a fresh green to the hash because I think it just lightens up all this heavy fried flavor, the greasiness. Um, and then when you cut into this, the yolk's just gonna drape naturally over the hash. It's gonna be delicious. Chef, I have a dumb question. How do you julienne green, green onion? You just slice them lengthwise. Slice them on a bias. So if this is if this is your green onion, right? I'm gonna yeah. just cut it angled like this. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. This julienne is basically uh, it's basically thin strip. Yeah. So any questions on corned beef hash? Oh, that looks fantastic. It does look fantastic. I think this is going to be a great dinner. I love breakfast for dinner. So, all right. Well, thank you guys. Way okay. to go. You now are eight Thanks, coaching Jeff. masters. So, by the way, have a wonderful two, night. By the way, I, I just did two perfect poached yeah. eggs. Beautiful. That's the best. That's and you know best. what? You're going to do a few very bad ones too. So, don't be surprised if you do. It's okay. Well, they're almost perfect. I like it. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank Thanks, you guys. Jeff. Have a great night. Bye. Bye. Bye.